right, guys, so I'm gonna, I got a stool here, because you know these, these big trucks are pretty far off the ground. And this is probably my most important tool, is my knee pad here, so that I can get up on top of the truck at some point. Now what I'm gonna do first is I got my 10 millimeter, I'm just gonna use my electric ratchet wrench, and I am going to remove this, uh, this shroud from above the upper intake manifold. This is the first thing we'll need to do to get access to that oil pressure sensor. Sender, rather. Okay, two more. One more. Okay, hopefully we get these all out. Maybe a little bit more on this side. shroud off and we'll just kind of set it aside over here by the turbocharger. Now you're gonna have to trust me on the next one that the next thing you're gonna have to do is swap out your 10 millimeter socket and go with 15. What we're gonna do with the 15 is this is your oil excuse me your fuel filter and the 15 I believe one right here is that size. We're gonna need to loosen this because it's gonna give us some clearance to get at the oil pressure sender. It's going to go kind of slow with because I do not want these bolts falling down here and ruining my day. And the reason we did that is just so that we can move this off a little bit and kind of angle it that way. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a flashlight, get my tools out of the way here. And hopefully, you guys can see down here. And right down here, where my finger is, and this harness that I'm tapping on, that's who we're after. That is, this will make a better, better view. That's our oil pressure sender right down there. Okay, so by getting the fuel filter out of the way, I can now get my hand down here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just reach around the front, I'm gonna disconnect the harness. It's one of these kind of like little ski slope clips, so you just have to give it a little push up and it'll pop off. I'm going to send this over here because I don't want to get any dirt on it. All right, so now's the hard part. Now, if this had been a 95 or earlier, instead of this sender being right here, it would have been back here underneath the glow plug relay, and it would have been a pretty easy thing to get out because you step back for a second and show you tools I'm going to use back here a moment. If it had been a 95 or an earlier, I would have used a socket like this. It's a special tool. This one's a, a Lyle brand tool. I don't remember what the number is. I'll look it up later and show you. And it would have been fairly straightforward, right? So let me show you the replacement um, sender here from AC Delco. So it's a 192-44501. And then there's a Delco number, uh, D as in David, 1808, A as in Apple. And if I, if I had this on a 95 or earlier, it would have been sitting in the back, like I said, um, underneath that glow plug sensor. I would just pop this on a socket wrench, put it in, and take it out. It's just a special kind of a tool, because if you look at the actual part, it's got a multifaceted flange around it, so it's very difficult to use a socket. You're not going to be able to use a 12-point socket at all. It'll tear it apart and a six-point socket you might get lucky with. But you're supposed to use a special tool like this. However, if we come back and take a look at um, back where we are here, climb back up with my flashlight. Knee pad here. And we come back.
back down here, we'll see if we try to use this tool on this part, we can't get it in here, right? Because the problem is that this, um, this um, intake manifold runner right here, this guy right here, is obstructing our ability to get the, to get the tool on. And so I can, I can get it like uh, right at the top, but I can't get it all the way on because of this guy. So what the factory wanted you to do, you know, the, the brilliant GM engineer that worked on this, they wanted you to pull the entire intake manifold off. And you can do that. And then if you do all the work to remove the intake manifold, then you'll be able to use this tool and easily remove this guy. But that's not what I want to do because that's a lot of work. So I'm going to show you a different tool. This tool is from Snap-on. And as you can see, it's kind of like a crow foot. And this is a S6152 tool. Gets on like that. Gets rid of the problem we've got with the obstruction. <clears throat> and then if we take a look at the part again for a moment here. It's still got the same kind of special connector, but it just goes on like that. And that's what we're going to use to get this off. And that's the only way you're going to get this off uh, without taking off the intake manifold and damaging the part. Now you can go get, there's a type of tool, I forget what it's called, I think it's called a basin wrench that you can get from a plumbing store. And it's kind of a shape that you can get in there and it will just destroy um, the bottom of that. And you can get this guy out and you can try to uh, put it in by hand and find another way to tighten it, but the right thing to do is to get the right tool. So I'm going to I'm going to use this to get it out, but I'm going to pause the video for a second because I'm going to go to something else. I'm going to get a little uh, can of compressed air because one of the things I want to do when I get the part out, you know, because it comes is pre-coated uh, with thread sealant on the new one, but as I take this guy out, I don't want any crud or debris to fall into um, where it screws in. And then end up getting pushed into the new sensor. So what I like to do is get a little can of compressed air after we break the torque on the old part. We'll spray that in there to get the debris out of the way and then we'll take it out and replace it. So let me pause just for a moment. Back. Just climbing back on my knee pad here. By the way when you do the knee pad just be very careful that you're not putting any pressure on the clamp that holds the battery cable because you don't want that to get busted. All right, and then I'm looking for what I did with my flashlight. There he is. Okay, I already have him up here. See my little wiring harness. I wanted to crawl back down there. I want to keep him over here. All right, so I'm going to use a regular wrench with this because uh, instead of the, the electric, I'm not going to be able to really um, turn it much, right? Because it's going to only turn it a little bit. fuel filter out of the way. Put this on there. Okay. It's on there now. We're going to give it a turn. There it goes. Let's see how much further I got. Pick it up. Reposition it. And that's what you're going to have to do. You pick it up. You turn it. Pick it up. Reposition it because you know you can't go all the way around with this type of a connection. I mean, I assume you cut type of a tool on the end of the ratchet. Okay, up and over again. All right, it's starting to get a little looser. Just gotta be patient with it. And unfortunately, I just went too far and I got it stuck. So I'm going to have to tighten it a little bit. There it goes. To peel and put it back up again. So, you know, this might look like a lot of work, but let me tell you something this is infinitely easier than yanking off the intake manifold. All right, I got this guy loose enough that I'm going to take my compressed air down there. Get all that little bit of 
dirt and stuff out of the way. And let me see if I can actually get through with my hand and finish taking it out by hand. It is a super, super, super awkward place to be, right? So you're up here on top of the engine, you don't have a lot of room to work at all. You can just barely get your hand in here. Nope, still can't turn it by hand, so I'm gonna have to keep going with the tool. All right, so here, you know, I'm sure you guys don't wanna watch me just keep doing this. So I'm gonna pause the video until I get this where I can take it out by hand, and then we'll pick it up. Before I take this off, I just wanted to give you guys a nice clear shot down here. So right, you can see the tool sitting on the uh, sensor, right? So I can turn it and see how it's turning like that. Just figure you might not have saw it from the other angle before, but you can't see anything when I get down here to go get it, right? Because I'm gonna cover it with my hand. So that's the deal with this guy, right? So he just goes in just like that. Of course, I can't get it out now with the camera in the way. So I'm gonna have to move the camera aside for a moment to finish getting this piece out. That was the that was the deal that I wanted you to be able to see how the tool fit on the part. I went ahead and I got the old part out, the old the old sender. I'm just gonna throw it in the box with a new one, and then I started it down here you can see this guy right here i'm going to try and show you what i do is it kind of come in here very carefully with two fingers and you just kind of start threading it in with two fingers you got to be super patient right you can see what i'm doing here and you just get it going part way until you can use the socket or the crow foot whatever term you prefer and once you get it to a point where you can wiggle it and it's not moving then you know that you've got it threaded properly. And we can take the same tool we used to get the old one off. And we can put this one on. Okay. So same kind of deal, right? We can get this guy settled in. And then we turn it. Hopefully you guys can see this. Turning, right? Trying to really get you a view. It's obviously not the most efficient way to get this installed, but hopefully you can see that it's turning on here ever so slowly. Okay, that's a nice, that's a nice view right there. It's probably as good as it's going to get, right, because of all the obstruction. So. Same kind of deal, just pick up the tool, put it back down, turn it half, pick it up, put it down, turn it half. That's basically the drill with the reinstallation of this, the sender. Same kind of a thing. So um, there's no torque on this. I'm just gonna tighten this up until it feels snug. You don't wanna put it in over tight. And then after that, we'll hook up the um, harness and we'll put the housing back on and we'll see how it works. I'm gonna pause it while I tighten this guy up. Guys, I've got the, uh, the new sensor tightened in. I've gotten the uh, wiring harness hooked up to it. I've retightened up the bolts for the fuel filter. And at this point, the only thing left to do is to uh, test it. I'm not gonna put the shroud on until I do that. And then I'm gonna put the shroud back on. So um, after I do that, I'll come back and uh, I'll kind of recap what we did. All right, guys, um, just finishing up torquing these guys on the shroud. Uh, the shroud bolts, the 10 millimeter bolts, are 100 inch pounds of torque, that's inch pounds. And then uh, underneath there, when the um, fuel filter housing is torqued back down, that's 18 foot pounds. Everything's back together. I started it up before I torqued it, ran fine. So I hope that this repair helps you out with how to change your oil pressure sensor for a 96 and up six and a half liter diesel. Again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found the video useful.